We got Edgar Hernandez in the house this morning. He is a District 2 candidate. Good morning, Edgar. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Uh, well, tell us about yourself. Who is who is Edgar? Uh, what Edgar. do you do? Uh, what do you do for fun? What do you do for a living? Tell us about you. All right. So uh, uh, my name is Edgar Hernandez. I've been here actually after Hernandez Jr. My dad's Edgar Hernandez Sr. And uh, I've been here for 38 years. I was born in Los Angeles, California, uh, Monterey Park County. And when I was two years old, we moved to, to Yakima. Uh, so I am the son of migrant farm workers. Uh, that, that's particularly the reason why they moved over here, just to work in the ag industry. Um, and I've been here ever since. Uh, I thought years. you left L.A. because the movie producers were hounding you to be a child star at age <laughs> two. And you just, ne- you just needed to get out of town for a while. Oh, wouldn't, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, yeah good yeah, problem yeah, to I, have. Yeah. If that didn't happen, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> uh, are, you, are you married? you have family? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, happily married. Uh, my wife, she's from Mexico. Uh, I have two children. Uh, one is uh, a boy that's six years old. Sorry, eight years old. My daughter is six. Uh, my boy has autism, and my daughter, uh, she also she doesn't have autism, but she's uh, disabled. Uh, she's got a, she was born with a lot of abnormalities, but we're getting there. So you got a full hand a handful at home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, yes. So, so uh, I've been living here ever since. Uh, I worked the fields with my parents uh, for many years, and then eventually my dad became a, a local fruit grower, a small fruit grower. Uh, so I've been helping him uh, with this business every once in a while, and I've been working for a company now that I still work uh, called G as Long Company. Oh sure. Um, they're in Union Gap, and uh, they're, they're also related to the ag industry. So they, you know, uh, provide services for uh, fruit growers in the valley, and as well as uh, you know, pesticide products. Sure. So you know, you know what it uh, takes to really keep right the valleys. Uh, uh, main engine of commerce churning then, don't you? Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, on top of that, I manage a Facebook group called La Chamba. Chamba is a slang word, Spanish slang word for work. And what that group uh, entails involves uh, you pretty much, uh, you have workers and uh, supervisors and managers and fruit growers communicating with each other to see if they're looking for workers, you know, to work for them. Or if the workers are looking for work, so, so kind of clearinghouse, so put people of, together. Yeah, huh? so it's kind of yeah, putting people together to connect, you know, together and, and see, you know, hey, what's out there? La Chamba. La Chamba. La Chamba. Okay, that's yeah. cool. All right. La Chamba. Well, with all that on your plate, why in the heck did you decide to run for city council? My goodness, tell us why you decided to do that. It's a good question. <laughs> you know, uh, as I said before, living here for 38 years and looking at everything that's happened, you know, I believe that. You know, I can serve my community, uh, you know, with with the experience that I have um, as far as, you know, kind of just looking after every issue at hand. And the past city council, you know, uh, the past past couple of city councils that's been in there, uh, they haven't done a poor job, but I believe that, you know, I can do, you know, what I can for my community. My community right now needs a lot. I mean, it's uh, just... Doorbelling lately, you know. Uh, it's, it's yeah. What are you it, hearing? What, what it's, you... It's, it's been a great experience. Yeah, and I bet. What what if, uh, what I've been hearing? Uh, I mean, it's it's really surprising. Uh, you know, uh, East Chestnut, for example. I was over there the other day and a couple of weeks ago, and they 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 want sidewalks. Uh, East Chestnut, kind of uh, at the end, going to Fair Avenue. They don't have any water in the last. You know, I mean, in the last five houses in that road. Uh, and that's, now I'm talking about like irrigation water. For some reason, uh, I'm over here by Fiesta Foods, uh, mm-hmm. that precinct, and uh, they they want more, you know, city lights, kind of, you know, just lighting the the area, the house, the streets. Uh, so there's a lot of infrastructure that still needs to happen, and a lot of people are are begging for that right now sure. in the district too. So it, it's it's really interesting. Uh, how much you know needs you know you know there was an equity study in 2017 that that showed kind of an east-west comparison Uh, and then while the numbers were sort of comparable it still matters where those numbers are so if you do have neighborhoods that don't have lights that's critical you you know that speaks to safety uh, not only just uh, to walk and not trip as much as it does for putting an eye on who might be doing something they shouldn't do and things like that. Yeah. That kind of stuff really affects quality of life, right? It does. It does. And, and I mean, and then also speed bumps. I mean, I was, East Chestnut, 
over here in the precinct over here by Fiesta Foods. Slow those people down. Uh, you know, <laughs> they're complaining about, you know, cars speeding all the time, yeah. you know, and they're, they're like, you know, where's where the speed bump? We need speed bumps over here. You know, we need something over here. Um, violence, uh, you know, can't stop hearing about that. You know, just, I was yesterday, I was just doorbelling over here, uh, in that precinct over here, uh, by Fair Avenue. And, you know, they're just telling me, hey, you know, we just, some, there was a drive by over here last week and he needs to stop. You know, we, we, and then they just take off really quick. We didn't need speed bumps, you know. And, uh, there's also, you know, violence and gunshots over here on East Chestnut, over here by Domino's Pizza, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's crazy, you know, uh, and, 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 and especially right now where you're, you're hearing about, you know, these, you know, drive-bys and shootings. You know, we already had a, what, six shootings past retaliation. Kind of stuff, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of retaliation, I was doorbelling, you know, I, I've been doorbelling since, since April. Um, and one of the things that I've learned, and it's, it was kind of like a flashback because I live on South uh, Natchez Avenue, right in Adams Street, in that corner, and I grew up there my whole life. And just uh, just walking uh, towards, there's a, a mini market called Chopper's Market owned by uh, Mrs. Pleasant. Um, mm-hmm. And I used to walk there as a kid just to buy Cheetos. And I was nine the, years old. Nine years old. I'm a old. Cheetos guy myself. Yeah, I was, I was nine years old. And, you know, what do I know about gang? Nothing at that time, you know. And then you have cars pull in and tell me, hey, what do you claim? What gang are you in, you know? So doorbelling right now. I'm wearing right now blue shoes. Oh, no. I'm wearing blue shoes right now. Oh, no. And, and you know, and I wear a hat that's hot, you know, and sunglasses. And I kid you not, I've had it probably about, you know, a couple cars just, just turn around, pull out, you know, and just Checking kind of you out, follow yeah. me. Check wow, me out. Wow, yeah. really? Yep, yep. Yeah. And I told this to my team, Because you know, you're wearing blue shoes. Blue shoes. Right? Just blue shoes. Yeah, blue shoes. Yeah, wow, blue shoes. Uh, and I, I might have be, you know, been wearing a blue shirt, but... But that's the thing. The thing is, you know, right now it's just uh, it's really sketchy in that sense. You know, you have people follow you have people follow me. There's a uh, white SUV, you know, just following me right there on Adams Street by Adams Elementary School. Uh, and I thought he was just gonna just head out his way. He decided to go, turn, turn around, and, and just drive really slow and uh, see me. And I just waved at him, like, hey, just just can't pay. <laughs> Well, but how do you address how do you how do you address something like that? What do you think should be done? You, you know, uh, with with gangs and violence uh, that I grew around my whole life. Uh, first of all, we need to increase police presence. Um, so you know, so the defunding police in my book is not an option. You know, hmm. we we need police. We need more police now. Um, and we need more police patrolling the streets. Uh, yeah, you would have liked to have had an that, officer just that, drive by about right there. Yeah, right? That, that, and that's something also that, you know, a lot of residents have been, you know, complaining about uh, in the district, too, is there's not enough police presence in the streets. They might drive around probably once, but, you know, it's, it's probably not enough. And so, you know, that, that would be my solution, number one solution. Number two, um, I've talked about this many times. Um, you know, I, I grew up in church my whole life, and growing up in church, you know, there's a there was a few faith-based programs, and one of them that worked was Victory Outreach, and this was back in the late 90s, mid 90s, um, and so what they would do is, you know, they'd go and they would either go to churches, or uh, they did it a couple times during the day it was auditorium, from what I remember. And they would actually bring in local gangs, Remember rival well. gangs, yep. and you know, play do a small skit for them, small little drama sure. with, a, with a good message, positive message, sure. mm-hmm. and that would actually turn their lives around. And you know, we, I mean, when I say we, you know, I, I, uh, I mean, uh, the church in general, you know, here in, in Yakima, uh, kind of just faded away a bit from that, you know, and just kind of disappeared and i want to bring that back and we have a couple of them i mean we have celebrate recovery uh that four square church you know has that's a good program and then we have team challenge uh in pasco uh there's one uh, one in tri-cities but you know one would help out here in yakima too team challenge Great ideas so All right, but here's the thing yeah I, I love that and i and yeah. i know that it works uh not for everybody but it works and you're right the church needs to step back up yep. uh and and realize that this is at the heart of our city and our young people in our future and everybody's quality of life and safety but 
technically, which takes me to my next question, that's generally not the job of a city. Uh, you know, the city's job is to make sure your toilet flushes when you hit the handle, the lights come on, and that the police do drive by and that kind of stuff. Um, so are you suggesting like an expanded role for city government in terms of these kinds of things or that that would be that would be that would be great i'm not saying uh you know talking about an expanded role but just a uh, 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 a solution you know to add to a problem that already exists um and you're you're right you know as a city council member you know a, a public public member um you know i think there's other Issues that people would, you know, actually like you to, uh, well, to address. You there's, know, there's limitations on you. That's just it. You know, and, and everybody who wants to run for council thinks I'd like to do this, this, and this, and then you realize, wait a second, we don't have any authority to do that. It's like, yeah, dang yeah. it. But so then it becomes one of how do I find solutions that work within the city government's uh, uh, parameters? The, yeah, and well, the thing is, is that we, I mean, as as a, as a city council member, you know. They have to do everything in their part to bring community community leaders together, work with them together, you know, and uh, and try to find out, hey, you know, what can we do? Uh, you know, I mean, look at a uh, uh, camp uh, was it Camp Hope? Yeah, yeah, you know, Camp Hope. You know, uh, I uh, what's his name? Uh, the the chief guy there. He got a hold of me, you know, and started talking to me and, and started, you know, just. Uh, uh, introducing himself and you know what his program is about and and i've known about them for a while you know but i in my opinion i believe they're doing a really great job and that's where you know city council members need to come in and kind of give out a hand and say what else do you need you know gotcha um so so that excellent well it is uh you know between homelessness and yeah. and uh, uh housing which is tied to housing I mean, the city's job isn't to build houses, but it's to, like you say, sort of facilitate to be yes. that, that middleman who has some resources and then to leverage those resources and kind of pull it all together. Yep. Um, and, and a person that has a, a heart for that and, and that can creatively think. Um, yeah, know. yeah, because, because the, you know, I mean, the church in general, that, that's more of a volunteer coming mm -hmm. from them. But they also see the problem, you know, and, and many times... They're trying to leave it to the city, you know, but but I'm I'm a big community guy, so I believe in the community coming together mm -hmm. and working on the solution. And that's what I've seen when it's you know, when I was a kid. It's it's and it and it worked. It worked many times over, you know. Um and I know a lot of people are like, Well, you know, what if they don't want to change? What if they don't want to do this? Well, you know, at least we tried, you know, we, we tried. But there's always somebody, you know, in 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 the bowl, you know, fishing in the bowl that actually, you know, yep. get their life turned around, you know. And I knew a few. I mean, I know uh, some ex gang members, uh, you know, that have been out there working together, uh, trying to help out, you know, uh, bring a solution to the streets, you know, as far as gang violence and drugs and other, you know, petty crime. Um, and I believe one of them uh, has a, a, an organization called the Love Project, um, and he is an ex-gang leader here in Yakima, and he's been working with nobody of mine, and you know that used to go to our church, and he goes to Four Square Church now. But you know they're both ex-gang members, and so they're the ones doing you know the grunt work out there. But you know they they need help. Sure. They need help. Yeah, they that's need help. right. That's right. You know? KIT News Time 7:55. If you're just joining us, we're talking to District Two candidate Edgar Hernandez. Edgar, how would you how would you describe yourself politically? Politically, uh, I'm a conservative. I'm conservative, and I keep telling people I'm not conservative because of a political background. It's just uh, that I, I grew up in church and I believe in Bible values. Um, so, so I am a conservative. Uh, I am currently a Republican precinct committee officer for my precinct as well. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to, I don't want to say it, that I want to affiliate myself, you know, with, uh, what's your reaction? Did do people ever ask you that when you're out there? Yes. campaigning? What's your, what's their reaction in your, yes. in your district? Oh, okay. Well, it's really funny. It, you know, a lot of them don't care, especially the Hispanic community. Um, you know, and especially the ones that can't speak English, don't know how to, you know, they don't know the sure. language, English. Um, so when I knock on their door, it's really rare that they ask me. But they can read it on my flyer, and it's in Spanish, you know, my political background. And so 
they don't really care. All they want is somebody that represents them. Right. And I've been, I've been, right I've been, I've been catching that, you know, uh, since day one. You know, I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. Just please rep, be our voice. And and it, it's funny because uh, only I think only one person out of all the houses that I doorbelled was kind of hesitant about my political background. You know, she she's a Democrat. She's a Democrat, she's a Democrat and she asked me. Uh, you know, did you vote for Trump? You know, did you do this and did you do that? So I, I try to shy away from those questions because sure. uh, this is a local position. Yeah. And I, when I filed, I filed as, as nonpartisan as it should be. But right now, the Hispanic community, they don't, they don't, really, they don't really care. That's good. Um, and that, that's the reaction that I've been getting. That's the, the reception that I've been getting. Well, the reason for a question like that is that the nation is divided. Uh, you know, uh, we saw with the changeover in... Um, our city council, uh, you know, Yakima, the voting record shows we're a 60-40 town, conservative, um, liberal, and the districts allow for uh, folks to drill down and maybe get some more uh, liberal uh, representation, which has happened with the ACL ruling. And, and now you have a council in the past that, you know, was uh, getting itself involved in whether the, there should be, a, you know, we should shine on the climate change accords or immigration flights and, and all the things that aren't a city government's perspective. We, we sort of started gobbling up at national issues and things like that. And, yeah. and that brought divisiveness and that undercuts the confidence in city government doing mm -hmm. city things, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that's why people, um, you know, in general want to know where people are at because you'll bring those values yep. with you. And to hear you yep. say... I'm a Bible-believing Christian, and yep. those values come with me. Yep. That, that says a lot right there. I believe, I believe one, one's character speaks for itself. Beautiful. And, you know, and that, that's how I, I would like to put it. Uh, Edgar, uh, you're in an elevator with a bunch of folks. It's uh, crowded. There are it, a lot of them it, in there, yeah. thousands listening right now. <laughs> it's a big elevator. Tell them why they should vote for you, Edgar, as opposed to anyone else. They, they should vote for me uh, if they want expanded solutions to uh, to our local economy, to our crime, drugs and gangs, uh, kids' safety in school, uh, and this includes children with disabilities in school, homelessness, infrastructure, and just keeping Yakima clean, and uh, no income tax ban, vote for me.